Welcome back. Let's keep moving forward with learning about inheritance and polymorphism. We're actually leading into a topic here called interfaces. You learned about classes and how you can extend. We just talked about abstract classes, how they're sort of a combination of partly coded implemented methods and some methods that are not implemented. And now we have interfaces. Uh, you can read this description later, but basically an interface states a whole bunch of methods that a class or a subclass should get, but you don't really implement them. And so let's just walk you right to an example here to show you what this means. So in the example folder here, there's a project called Interface Examples, and I'm looking in the one called Remote Car. Now what this is supposed to be is a, just a little framework. Let's pretend we want to have a satellite system that can control cars from all the makers, like Ford and Honda, uh, whoever else, that want to build a remote controlled car that these satellites can control. Now obviously they have to talk to the people that own the satellite company that's going to control these cars and go, okay, well what do you need our cars to do? And the satellite company says, well, here's what I need you to do. I need you to satisfy this interface. So here's an interface in Java. You just make it public, has to be public, and you say interface remote controllable. Okay, that's just a name they chose. And then the satellite maker that's going to control these cars starts to list methods that they require the car manufacturers to put in their cars. Now by default, all these methods are public. And so I don't actually write the word public there. You can if you want, but you don't have to. So all these methods are public. And just like in an abstract class, these methods are abstract. They haven't been implemented. It's just the signature of the method. Now this is a simple example of an interface. Now what do you do with the interface? Well, it's a lot like the abstract class. If you want to use this interface, or they say implement it, you have to make sure that your class codes all these methods. And only then can it be considered part of the remote controllable family. So let's go look at how this is done inside, let's say, Ford. Okay, they've made a car, they want it to be remote controlled, and they have to satisfy the remote controllable interface. So the satellite can use these methods with them. So they do this. Notice it's not the word extends. The word is implements. And so public class Ford car implements remote controllable. This is the nice thing with interfaces. Um, you implement them and you can actually implement as many as you want. And so you could have other interfaces here that you satisfy as well. But we'll get to that a little bit later. Now, can you just write the word remote controllable up there? Implements remote controllable? No, not unless you've actually coded the methods. Now I know I haven't really put code here, but here's the methods that satisfy the interface. So there they are. And while technically I've put code not shown, return something, that's gonna be okay. There is code here, so it works. And so technically I've coded these methods, but obviously I'm not gonna fill this up with tons of code right now, right? This is just a little sample for you. And so I code those five methods. Notice the signatures have to match exactly, right? You can't get creative and add extra parameters or anything. If the interface says set target speed takes in a double, then you have to have set target speed that takes in a double, right? Got to make it match. So these methods satisfy remote controllable. Notice what happens if I just take one of them out. All of a sudden my class Ford car Ford car is not abstract, basically meaning, hey, this thing isn't finished yet because you've said it implements remote controllable. Well, you haven't. And so you can't call yourself a class. You're not finished. And it doesn't override and it lists the method. It says, hey, you haven't coded get position GPS. So technically, you can't write implements controllable. Now, you could do that. That's fine. But you're not implementing remote controllable, which you're going to see in a minute or two, this is our goal here, right? We want all the car manufacturers to be able to say implements remote controllable. And let's put that method back. Now, 
It doesn't mean those are the only methods you can code. Those are the ones you have to code to implement it. But then you can do whatever you want, your extra methods, right? Maybe these methods, the code in here, uses your other methods. That's totally fine. Okay. But when you implement, you've coded the methods listed in the interface. Okay. That's a nice primary basic rule here with interfaces. Now you'll see here the Honda car, same idea. They go and code those methods. Whoops, I have not put implements, so let's put implements remote controllable. I spell it right. Perfect, and it allows it because I have those methods coded. Here's the thing. Maybe they do their code here differently than the Ford car does. Maybe their GPS system's different, different code. Maybe getting the speed. They have a different system to get the speed from their car and their motor. Same thing with the get direction, the set target speed, set target direction. It doesn't matter how they code it, but the fact is, is that they've coded it. And the Honda car, without a doubt, is probably going to have different code from the Ford car, unless they're stealing secrets, right, or making the exact same car. So what's the use of the interface um, now that we've coded it inside Ford car and Honda car? Well, let's go to this class here, Jarvis. If you're a fan of Iron Man, you'll understand that's is a uh, just another really intelligent system or something. But whatever it stands for, it's his uh, smart computer friend. Here we'll see that Jarvis Car Manager is going to be the satellite thing that helps control all the cars. But here's what it can now do: if you're a maker of cars and you have a car that can be remote controlled by the satellite you can now do something like this, array list of remote controllable. Now, what's a remote controllable? Well, a Ford car implements remote controllable, so it qualifies as a remote controllable instance. And Honda car implements remote controllable, so it qualifies as a remote controllable instance. What does that mean? Well, it means those instances have these methods, and those are the methods that the Jarvis car manager, controlling all of them, get to use to control the cars. So for instance, I have this array list. I could add a couple cars into it at some point. And then if I wanted to, I could say, Jarvis says, stop all cars everywhere on the planet. He can go through the list, and he can say, hey, car list, get K. Now, he may not know whether that's a Ford car or a Honda car, but what he does know it's a remote controllable object because that's how it got into the list. It implemented remote controllable. So what's guaranteed? It's guaranteed to have these methods and it can use the set target speed dot set target speed to stop the car. It's guaranteed the objects could be in there. How many different types of cars could be in there? Well, any car manufacturer in the world, if they want to make their system implement remote controllable, they can be added to that list. And the Jarvis Car Manager satellite system can use all the different methods, there's obviously tons of others, to turn, stop, slow down, speed up, etc., GPS the cars. And so it's really nice that way. The interface doesn't tell you how to do it, just tells you that you need to be able to run these methods and that's the basics on an interface what's also nice about this if uh, Honda I shouldn't say Honda we already got it if Toyota wants to make a car and they want it to be remote controllable by the system all they have to do make sure it satisfies the interface code the methods add your little implements remote controllable and then their cars can be added to this list as well uh, what other stuff can we tell you at this point just like an abstract class, you can't make a remote controllable. So just to show you here in a little bit of the code, in the middle of this method here, if you actually try making a remote controllable, R is new remote controllable, oh, two L's, you'll see Remote controllable is abstract, can't be initiated or instantiated. Basically, you can't make this thing, right? There's no code associated with it. It's just a bunch of signatures at this point. 
And so it's like an abstract class. It's not complete yet. You can't actually make one. But what you can do is you can do stuff like this. Honda car. And if I've got the constructor right, that's no problem. Okay, so it still follows the rules of inheritance. A Honda car is a remote controllable. Okay, it can be added to the list. Anyways, that's a nice little introduction, hopefully, to interfaces. I have a whole bunch of examples here we're going to walk through in the other videos that just show you how interfaces can actually be used. This was just one example of how they can be used. Check out the others. Interfaces are very widely used in Java, and it's nice if you can sort of get the, the big picture on why they can be powerful. Thanks for watching.